So you may be wondering, like, what is a photo of my dog doing at this point in the lesson, other than to cheer you up because he's a cute dog? Um, you know, you met my cat. She'll sometimes appear in the video, so she's sort of skulking around. The dog's a little bit harder to get up um, here close to the camera because he's uh, larger and older. Um, but anyway, the, the real reason I wanted to, to show you this was not to show you my dog. Uh, it was really to, um, to start kind of a conversation about um, data and the types of multidimensional data that we can work with now. There's a huge amount of multidimensional data out there in the world. In fact, even data that we sometimes think of as linear can very easily acquire other dimensions. So uh, one of the examples I'd like to use, of course, is music. And you might think that you know music is just a time series of, of pressure values. Um, but if you've ever used you know, a pair of these, you'll see that there are uh, two of them, uh, one for each ear. And actually, even the simplest form of music that you enjoy you know, with your earbuds or whatever you have um, is actually itself two-dimensional because there are two different audio tracks that are being fed one into your left ear, one into your right ear. And the differences between the information that's contained in those actually is what gives um, you know, music that you listen to on your headphones that sense of space. It gives it the sense of positioning, like you're hearing something from one place as opposed to another that's caused by slight timing differences between the two signals that you're receiving. So even music um, is not single dimensional. Obviously, things like photos are highly multidimensional. So, so here's an example. Um, you know, again, here's a photo of you know Choo Choo, my dog. And you know, you think about how do we represent this because this comes and becomes another conversation as well about representation. How do we take something like a picture and represent it in a way that a computer can work with it? And so what I want to do is sort of walk you through the process of doing this. Some of you may understand this already, others of you may not. Um, so here's an example, you know, so this is a photo and obviously you can see sort of inherently this has two dimensions. Uh, so I've got, you know, um, you know a, a horizontal dimension and a vertical dimension. And when we talk about positioning, we're going to talk about multidimensional arrays today. And so we can actually set up an array that we could use to store all the information that you would need to represent this photo. Now, you know, there are some conventions that come into play here. So for example, uh, where's zero? Um, if we're gonna start the array, the numbering in the array from zero, which is what we do when we use arrays, we have to kind of decide on where the origin is. Um, and typically in, in photos, I think, I, I'll have to check this, um, I find this a little odd, but it's usually the upper left-hand corner. That's the, that's the reference point. So this is zero, zero. Um, and the horizontal numbers go up this way, the vertical numbers go up this way. You would think it would be down here in the bottom left, because that's kind of like, then you'd be in the first quadrant in terms of you know your x and y axes, but um, if I recall correctly, it's actually up here. But it's arbitrary. We could put it anywhere we want, as long as everybody who's using this coordinate system agrees on it. Then the next thing is, how do you actually represent the information that's in each one of these cells? So the, you know, the, the two dimensions here are going to allow me to identify a specific part of the image. But how do I actually represent the color? And that's where you get into this type of thing. So if you could take your commuter monitor and zoom in you know, really, 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 really closely, this is what you would find. Um, and you can actually see on this photo like the little electric connections here um, you know, that, that exist so that these can be powered. And if you didn't know this already, the three primary colors of light are red, green, and blue. And by blending those together, um, your display can produce any one of a number of different colors. And so each one of the pixels in this image is represented as a number, like everything that a computer works with, but it's a number that has at least three parts, actually has four parts, but I'm not gonna talk about what the fourth is, um, three of those parts specify how bright should I turn on the, yellow, uh, the, the red part of that display, that point in the display, how bright should I turn on the green part, and how bright should I turn on the blue part. And by controlling the brightness of each one of those tiny, tiny, tiny little elements on your LCD screen, I can produce something that looks like this. It looks like an actual photograph. So again, the, the types of um, new you know, containers and and Java data types that we were going to work with today 
would allow you to work with data in a photo. We used to have a, an assignment where you would do that. Um, you could work with um, video data, which is really just you know uh, 2D photographs with the third dimension of time added. Um, you can work with much higher dimensionality data that you might need to work with a simulation or to do some sort of machine learning algorithm or something like that. Um, the possibilities are really endless. So we're going to see how to generalize away from that single linear data structure that we looked at before into a multidimensional data structure that can really support all types of higher dimensional data.